What's going on guys? Welcome to a new video where today we're going to be talking about the newly announced 13 inch MacBook Pro with Apple's own M1 chip. and unbox this and I've been using it for the past couple of days. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this. I know you've had a lot of questions. So let's chat about what makes this special, what makes this different, and what the future of Apple kind of looks like. Now this video is gonna be about two different things, power performance and power efficiency. So my main device is the 2019 16 inch fully maxed out MacBook Pro. And a lot of the times I really am tethered to the wall because using things like Final Cut and Photoshop, those are using a lot of power. But Apple says that with the new M1 chip, it's going to alleviate a lot of that and guarantee a longer and better battery life. So this life that I'm living right here, it might not be my lifestyle anymore. But there's only one way to know for sure, and we're gonna need to test that out. But before we do that, let's talk about why the M1 chip is gonna be a game changer. Apple is doubling down on their app store and uplifting developers and providing a seamless transition into the Mac environment. Rosetta is meant to ease the transition to the new Mac family. So I went ahead and I tried to download Lightroom on the new MacBook Pro, and it came up with a notification that said, install Intel-based version of Lightroom. So even though these apps aren't aren't yet optimized for M1, we can still download Lightroom, which are optimized for the Intel version. Another really cool thing that I'm personally excited about is that you can now use iOS and iPadOS apps on your Mac. So with M1, these apps just kind of all work seamlessly together. So I went ahead and I downloaded some of my favorite iOS apps and I've been using them on my MacBook. This obviously all is running on Big Sur as well, which I plan to do a separate video about Big Sur. I'm loving it so far. Okay, so Launchpad. Over here, we have the apps that I have downloaded, which are from my iOS. One of my favorite mobile games that I have been playing for the past five or six years two dots. And guess what? It works on my MacBook now. I was like playing this earlier just to like, you know, test it out and then 40 minutes went by and I'm like, you need to do something else. So this is a little bit dangerous as well. So I'm on level 2,312. So I've clearly been playing for a very long time. Not gonna lie, the first time this popped up, I tried to touch the screen. One day there might be a touch screen. That day is not today. Okay, you get it, this app works. Another cool thing is that I order Prime Now a lot, and a lot of the times I prefer to do things on my MacBook. Prime Now is one of those things. What are you shopping for today? I've added eggs to my cart. I need some English muffins. I can then just add my orders, check out, and I don't even have to touch my phone. What I think would be a game changer is if Instagram ever became available on here, because a lot of the times I'm adding my photos, I send them to my phone, I could actually just upload them directly from here and it would kind of alleviate that extra step. Imagine if TikTok was on here, I would never get anything done. So M1 is still obviously very, very new and a lot of the apps haven't transitioned or aren't accessible with the M1 yet, but I'm sure they will be. So let's talk about the power of the M1. It starts with its eight core CPU, dedicating four high performance cores working together for programs like Final Cut Pro, you get the incredible multi-threaded performance. For everyday tasks like web browsing, M1 relies on its four high efficiency cores, utilizing only a 10th of the power. The GPU balances the CPU, offering up to eight cores as well. The revolutionary architecture allows the M1 to handle playback of 8K ProRes 422 HQ video in full quality without dropping a frame in your Final Cut timeline. So for this MacBook Pro, it has eight gigs of memory and 256 solid state drive. Now what I'm coming from is on my MacBook Pro, I have eight terabytes. I do a lot of video editing and obviously photos and that takes up a lot of space. So for this, I have been editing off an external drive where I have all of my files. Normally I do only edit 4K, so 8K isn't something that I personally am dealing with. It's good to know that I can handle it, but for what I do, this is, this is fine. <laughs> this has been working great. My plan is to edit this video on the MacBook Pro and kind of just see how the battery can handle it. I wanna start with a full charge and just see how long it will go. So this does have up to 20 hours of battery life, which is the longest battery life ever in a Mac. It also has studio quality mics, improved camera quality, and active cooling system to sustain its super fast performance for hours on end. Another thing I've noticed is I really haven't heard any fans. I'm used to, like I said, my 2019 MacBook Pro. It's very 
very loud anytime I edit Final Cut and this is very quiet. Now I know the MacBook Air is silent. I also wanna say this is very silent. So obviously 2020, we have been working from home a lot. It's basically the, uh, the year of Zoom calls, WebEx, and just video conferences. So something that Apple has definitely prided themselves in on these devices are the better video quality. This also now has the three mic array, which records studio quality audio with 40% less hiss, so you can sound crystal clear. They also have made major improvements to their camera, debuting their most advanced image signal processor to date. It delivers sharper video with less grain, greater dynamic range, and better contrast and detail in low light conditions. So this is just a test. I'm opening up the camera. This is all from the camera and the audio from the new 13 inch MacBook Pro. Just kind of curious to see what it looks like. I literally am importing this directly from Final Cut. So let's see what it looks like and sounds like. So with all of these upgrades and all of these improvements in the power efficiency, you can last basically an entire day on just one charge. And that's actually up to 10 hours more than the previous generation. There has been so many times where I'm on like a call and I'm like, oh, my MacBook is, it's red. I didn't charge it. Now with the better battery and the more efficiency, hopefully I won't have that problem. This also offers up to 17 hours of wireless web browsing and up to 20 hours of video playback. It is a good thing that TikTok isn't optimized for this yet because I would just be browsing TikTok for 20 hours. So this is also something I'm excited about. Let's talk about USB 4. USB 4, what's that? I'm really glad you asked. So USB 4 utilizes the USB-C port, but now you're actually gonna be having speeds of up to 40 gigabytes per second. So for reference, USB 3 can only deliver up to 20 gigs per second. Basically, the M1 is just incredible. So now that we've kind of talked about all of that, I'm gonna kind of take you guys through like a day in the life of, well, me sitting on my computer, editing, making thumbnails, and we're gonna just test out the battery life. All right, so it is the next day and I'm getting ready to sit down and kind of work as I would in a normal day. It's gonna be an editing day, editing everything that we shot yesterday. Now, the one thing we didn't talk about was the fact that this only actually has two ports. We talked about the USB 4, but it does only have two USB slots, which I'm used to four from the Mac Pro and I have realized that I definitely favor this side for the charging and basically for everything and on this side we only have the headphone jack and then on this side we have the two USB 4 so that has definitely been something that I've been getting adjusted to since I have been using a lot of external drives if I have a drive plugged in or if I have a dongle plugged in and I'm transferring footage it's a good thing that we're gonna have increased battery life because we ran out of ports. All right, so I'm getting ready to edit for the day. Right now it is 11.25. I am unplugging the MacBook and we're gonna see just how long we can make it on a normal work day. A normal work day for me, which is basically just editing. All right, let's, uh, let's get that time lapse going and let's start editing some footage, shall we? So it's about four hours later, I've been doing some editing. I've also taken a break, gone upstairs, got some snacks, you know, done some things. And right now my battery is at 43%. Now I will say that this probably would not have happened on my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Anytime I even think about using Final Cut, my computer is like, nope, the battery just basically drops instantly. So overall my experience, I'm actually really impressed with the battery. Apple is definitely pushing the battery life, the more efficiency, and I feel like they have pretty good reason to. So I wanna talk about my experience with Final Cut. Everything was very smooth. It was actually running a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I have been shooting on the Sony a7S III and some of the files were the 120 and editing 124K on my MacBook Pro has been just a terrible experience. And I will say that this handles it way better. But also with that being said, I was having some issues where I would throw in a file to the timeline and it would kind of go, and it would like get stuck on this loop. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I would try to exit out and it wouldn't work. And I'm like, oh no. But it was something new that I've experienced with Final Cut that I've never experienced before. So that was interesting. Um, also some transitions weren't working. Uh, some of the transitions I use with like the motion VFX and some other just transitions also aren't optimized for this. So I can't use them for editing. So I'm not sure if that's a big sir. I'm not sure if that's the M1. I'm not sure what that is, but I wasn't able to use them now. If you guys are looking for some intense comparison to 
PC to Macs to other Macs, you're not getting it here. This is very, very baseline. This is what I use my MacBook for as an everyday editor, user. This is how I use my MacBook. If you want to see these comparisons, they are out there. You're just gonna have to look somewhere else. So this being the base model, the $12.99, I think that is an incredible price. I really am excited for people to try this out. And I'm excited for the future because I know that the M1 is just the beginning. And I don't know, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to see what the future holds because this is a very, very impressive start. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe for some more content and I will see you again soon.